It's K Reason, man. You rockin' with Taliban TV, stupid bitch. We um I checked out your catalog. I see you got a nice little catalog. Um and I remember earlier you told me you got 250 unreleased songs, huh? Hey, yeah, bro, I be working, fam. I be working. <clears throat> so how many songs you just a regular day, how many or day you lock in the studio, how many you do? Bro, what? The way a nigga schedule been, nigga, I been like in and out the yard, been really having to get back in the house and lock in, but fam. I go in there, bitch, on a good day, knock out three, four songs. Mm. A short amount of time, honestly. Yeah. Um, so, in the Dallas, when you coming up, did you listen to a lot of, um, did you listen to people from Dallas, or was it spread over, or how was it? Uh, I didn't know my city had no artists until 2012 when Young Nation came out. Everybody was on Young Nation, and I was seeing motherfuckers jocking the swag from from previous shit we had. Like, I just thought everywhere was like that when I was coming up type shit. Like, motherfuckers got that underground rappers, nigga who made Ricky Bobby, and motherfucker who made. Um, Trilly and Prince Rick, all them big took all them. I thought, I ain't even know they were from Dallas. I ain't know Dallas was different from the rest of the world. Like, I ain't know he was getting slept on none of that shit till I grew up. So, it was Young Nation for, till about 2000, from 2012 to about 2013, summer 2013, 2014. That's when they started to fade out. And Mo3 came about. But I. Found out about Mo3 before a lot of motherfuckers really knew he was because I went to McKinney's. So, uh, how did the data, how did the rap go from straight dancing to get put on to a whole different, some whole Some gangster shit. shit. Yeah. Shit, the, the transition from three to, I'm uh, the transition from Young Nation to three. Like, it was like, Young Nation was catching the end of, of, of the dancing shit and music, bro. Like, the Cat Daddy and all that shit, bro. All, all that shit would come to jerk and all that shit was, they was the very end of that shit. So, 2013, 14, you got niggas like Cheap Keith, Going Hard, Thug, Future. <clears throat> Motherfuckers hearing straight trap shit, straight gangster shit. So, Dallas like, shit, we want some gangster music. So shit, bro came about, but it was really slipped on for for a little second he had the bubble. It was, it was a long time coming. Hell yeah, I mean when when I was young, bro, niggas was trying to make a dance song and Texas was the place to be. Man. So I who, what you say? Nah, I, I, I thought you had said Dallas. I was gonna say as far as the, the dancing now, shit, Houston the place to be if if you want to get that shit chopped. So um, who was who? What's your top three top favorite three. artists that you listened to when you were coming up? No, coming up. Yeah. I just say the three different points in my life. Like, um, 50 Cent from like when I was a baby to about like five, six years old. Neil Wayne from about what? That's third grade to what? About sixth grade when Cheeky came out. Cheeky changed the game, so she. He ain't my third. Nah, 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 yeah, yeah, he ain't my third one. Yeah, so fucking. What that is, 50. Wayne and Keith. That's who I listen to while I was growing up. All right, so what you, what's your outlook on the, on the Dallas community scene today, though? It's going to take that one motherfucker to save it. But it's because it's like motherfuckers got a bad outlook on the shit. Like, we... We next up, motherfuckers trying to peep and tune in what we got going on, bro. But like, if, if motherfuckers from within the city don't work together, we gonna lose that spotlight that we've been working so hard to get type shit. It ain't just on the artists, it's on everybody. Everybody gotta play their part and get behind the motherfucker 
when they see some shit that's hot. So, um, you think everybody, with everybody, if you talk about everybody coming together then shit and putting on for the city, you think that shit got worse or you think it got better? Mm, it got worse, bro, because now uh, motherfuckers trying to doubt. I mean, scrolling through my Facebook. I hate to go on Facebook, but shit, I be wanting to go on there and laugh and shit a little bit. Motherfuckers like, um, three, three, three the hardest to ever come out, and he gonna be the only one. Fam, y'all can't say three gonna be the only nigga to come out of Dallas that spit some shit, bro. Y'all is putting a curse on the city. Boy, that's a horrible hex to put on Dallas. To say he gonna be the only one to ever, you feel me, spit some real shit out this whole what the fuck? Well, y'all just now told y'all just found out we was going hard like this. We been like that the whole time. Motherfuckers don't even know motherfuckers been in the same, but nigga, 25% of them motherfucking writings on motherfucking me, the chronic nigga, them niggas from South Dallas, fam. It wasn't just Dre and Snoop in that bitch. Yeah, nigga, Dallas in the house, bro. We been in the background of this shit. Motherfuckers, you gotta do that history. Yo, shout out to Taliban TV. I fuck with him cause he fuck with me. Call it Peter Boss.